What's up, Michael fam? It's Gary with Fresh from the Farm Fungi. I'm here in Sedalia on this uh, very cold January day. It's four degrees outside. So naturally, I uh, did some, some research this morning, and I wanted to do a video about sexual selection, the buller effect, and daimon mating and basidiomycetes. So for everyone out there who is not as technical or is just getting started, um, this will be a deep dive into some variations in breeding technology and just some of the exceptions to breeding in mushrooms. So if you want to check out a broad overview of breeding, um, I did a video on that. I'll post the link below. Um, but basically, in normal, um, the normal process for breeding basidiomycetes, which is a uh, mushroom producing fungus, the, uh, the normal process would be the mushroom produces haploid monocaryon. So it's a cell with half the genetic material, also known as a spore. Those spores would land on a surface, germinate, find another haploid, and they would merge. Some of them form clamp connections. Some of them just spontaneously merge, and they form a dicaryon mycelium, which contains both of the genetic components, which allows it to continue on to fruit. Um, so before we dive further into that, I just wanted to let you guys know um, if you're ordering these uh, Mush Love shirts on our Etsy, there's two different types of prints. So the white one has like this, uh, it's like an athletic material with the print actually infused in the fabric. And then there's the other option, which is the black shirt that I have. And that is a silk screen printed shirt. So I left um, both options up there. They're I think there's like a nine or eleven dollar difference, but the white ones are the ones with the um, the ink that's embedded into the shirt, and then the black one is the silk screen printed shirt. So I just wanted to clarify the difference. Um, I'm not sure if I should take one or the other down. I like to have more options on the Etsy, but I did know um, someone you know wasn't too happy with the silk silk screen printed shirt. So I wanted to clarify that and resolve that issue. So I appreciate the feedback. Um, even, you know, negative feedback is important for our business and as well as positive feedback. So if you like our videos, give us a thumbs up, um, subscribe to our channel, and check out our Etsy page, Fresh Fungi, for any of the uh, mushroom swag or all of our living mycelium cultures are posted on our Etsy. So, um... If you're looking for really high quality cultures, check out our Etsy Fresh Fungi. All right, now that I got that out of the way, um, let's continue onward into today's discussion. So basically, a long time ago, almost 100 years ago, it was assumed that mushrooms had a male and female sex, just like um, mammals and some plants, and it's a, you know... A pretty common feature in biology. However, in the 1950s or 1960s, um, there was a, a paper that came out which described the bowler phenomenon, um, and it was specifically found in Schizophyllum, so um, a specific type of mushroom, which is a tetraploidy. Um, so I believe that they used um, Corprinus lagopus, so uh, a rabbit foot inky cap mushroom. And the question at hand was, is there a, a dominant trait in mushroom breeding? So I guess sim boil it down to the simplicity of the question. So when two mushrooms are mating um, and the two nuclei fuse, is there a selection or a preference 
of a stronger genetic makeup over another one. So that would be the equivalent to male to male competition in nature. Or is there a female component of mating? So is there a selection for the strongest um, nucleus when there's a haploid that's receiving a nucleus? Is there a selection in that process? So they really investigated the selection of certain nuclear material during the mating of mycelium. So that is the first part of this whole video is like the sexual selection portion. Is there a male to male competition aspect in breeding mushrooms? And is there a female selection aspect when breeding mushrooms? So in nature, male to male competition would be all right the survival of the fittest so if you have two animals and one of them has better genes for running faster um, there's a higher chance that that gene is going to be passed on to the offspring because maybe that animal can obtain food more frequently because it's faster so there's a competition aspect and that will be selected for and then there's another aspect of female selection where maybe a female would select a partner in a bird for example a species of bird that has more vibrant colors and that is just part of the mating process as well and maybe the vibrant colors signifies um, healthier genetics because it can um, hold nutrients better over time or something like that um, do your own research. I'm just a guy on the internet, but I like to have these conversations to kind of get the, the thoughts moving, and I'm really diving deep into breeding this winter. So all of these, you know, thoughts and problems are amplified tenfold with mushrooms because there are so many exceptions. It's not just A plus B equals C, and we'll find that out shortly. So, with this paper, which I'll, I'll post the link, it's called The Bowler Phenomenon in Schizophilum Commune Nuclear Selection in Fully Compatible Dicaryotic Homokaryotic Matings. So, one of the most interesting aspects of this paper is the fact that they found out that a dicaryotic mycelium can spontaneously donate half of its genetics to a monokaryotic mycelium so that is an exception to all the rules and you know what you would think two spores land they're haploids they meet form diploid mycelium but um i don't know how they they discovered this but essentially they had a fully um dicaryotic mycelium of a corprina species and it was located next to a haploid or a monokaryotic mycelium and when those two myceliums connected they discovered that the dicaryotic mycelium spontaneously donated half of its genetic material to the haploid which created a diploid mycelium so there was not two haploids that came together to form a mushroom producing mycelium so that was mind-blowing um, so that kind of spawned the idea of all right well if we repeat this experiment over and over again is the same genetic material going to be transferred to that haploid and they discovered that there is a hierarchy of genetic material that will spontaneously transfer. So that kind of, you know, broke the barrier to some, you know, people that were arguing that it was kind of just random how mushrooms made it. But then this kind of solidified the fact that there might be hierarchy for selection or male to male competition sort of because there are it's not just a plus b equals c there's 
many factors that go into selecting, um, selecting the best mycelium. All right, so the, the process of a dikaryotic cell donating half of its genetic material to a haploid cell to perform or to produce a full dikaryotic mycelium is known as dimon mating. So dikaryotic monokaryotic mating. And it's spontaneous. I don't know how many different mushrooms can do this, but in this paper it was a corprinus species that they used and it could be, you know, just an exception to the rule. Um, there is, you know, so many different mushroom species. I only know a handful, and I've only read a few papers about this. But do your research. It's really fascinating. Um, they go through the whole process of how they discovered that one of those nuclei was preferred over the rest. It's pretty complicated, but they crossed about 36 different cultures together. And they discovered that there is one dominant trait that was continuously being passed on to the subsequent species. All right, so that kind of, you know, explains the the selection um, of of the nucleic nucleic material. Um, so then I I continued my research and I found a little bit less complicated of a paper and this was more focused on the bullar phenomenon in bipolar basidiomycetes mushroom or foliota namico. Sorry, I'm stumbling on my words here. But basidiomycata is just um, mushroom producing mycelium and bipolar is just um, having two different sets of nuclear material as opposed to the tetraploid, which was the corprinus. So the authors of this article obviously read this paper and they didn't like the conclusion because when they were mating the mycelium, there was four sets of um, nuclear material that was being transferred and it was very hard to read the data. So they decided to use a bipolar mushroom that just has two sets of genetic material when it's mating. But a really neat aspect of this paper is that I discovered that Foliota namico can spontaneously reduce itself from a um, dikaryotic cell to a monokaryotic cell at the tips of the culture, so the peripheral regions of the mushroom culture. So they were able to select out monokaryotic cells from a dikaryotic culture. So that is mind-blowing to me. Um, you guys should definitely read this paper. It's pretty amazing. It talks about some um, strategies for creating mutagenic strains as well using UV light. So that's another um, tool to add to the toolbox when breeding with mushrooms. So I wanted to explore that a little bit in the future. But basically this um, paper solidifies what is called the bowler effect on bipolar mushrooms as well. So they crossed a few different strains of um, dikaryotic mycelium with monokaryotic mycelium. So that is the dimon mating. And then they also found that there was a dominant trait that was being transferred over and over again as well. So there's two different species here that they're demonstrating a dominance of trait when breeding mushrooms. And then they also discovered the daimon mating, which is a diploid mycelium mating with a haploid mycelium. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, I don't really know what I'm getting at here, but I thought I'd point out these papers and 
possibly start the conversation going for future breeding strategies. Um, I think it would be really cool to be able to isolate a haploid out of a full Namiko culture and then bring in some other Namiko cultures and just cross them without producing spores. So that way you're starting off with a pretty rigorous strain that you already know and then you can try to select for those dominant traits over a couple generations and maybe you can strengthen your strain that way. That's my idea, but I haven't done it yet. Um, comment below if you have any questions about this. Um, give us a thumbs up if you would like me to continue to talk about some of these more technical aspects of breeding mushrooms. This is something at the very tip of my knowledge, so I would really like um, the community to kind of grow as I grow in my experience with breeding mushrooms. My long-term vision is to bring in some um, genetic modification technology like CRISPR-Cas9, but this paper really highlighted some basic um, mechanical ways to cause mutations in mushrooms like UV lighting and some other chemicals you can add. I know I've talked about snake venom in the past. Um, haven't really dove deep into that one yet, but just reading these two papers has opened up my mind on the possibilities of breeding mushrooms, and I hope that I express that in a way that you could understand. Um, I know it was a little convoluted in this video, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and until next time, much love.